Hello everybody. Thanks for joining me again. I've come back to one of my favourite spots on Dartmoor. I've been coming to this woodland for the last three years, maybe, and uh, only ever seen one other person. So I've arrived, not that stealthily, but as you can see, I've tried to wear some subdued colours. And first of all, I thought I'd just sit here and see what uh, birds are flying around. And already there's a pair of flycatchers flying around in these trees around me. In fact, there's, there's three of them over there. Now, I don't know whether they're youngsters this time of year or whether they're all males and it's territorial. Just nice to sit and observe. You have to be really patient if you're going to get a good photograph. So yeah, I'm going to sit here for a little while, see where these birds are hanging out regularly and then try and get myself in the best position to film them. As always, let's see what we find. Well, that was really nice to get that brief bit of film of the flycatcher. I'm now going to move a little bit further into the wood. I'm not sure if I can hear some young birds. I can certainly hear a uh, cuckoo just behind me on the open moor. Okay, let's go. Last time I was here, I was filming near a nest box, which is just up on that tree. Now, I haven't seen anything going in and out, so... So I've decided I'm just going to go down to the river now and see if there's any dippers. Find a nice spot to sit and just watch the goings on. Before I do, I thought I'd show you one of the other surprising things I found in the forest here. I was taking a photograph of this group of trees and the root system underneath. And I don't know if you can make it out. There's a mound, looks a little bit like a head, and to the right of the tree, a hollow. And then by just putting an eye in that hollow, this is the photograph I created. So any Lord of the Rings fans might recognise that eye from Smaug. So I'll be honest. I took the photograph of the collection of the trees and it wasn't until I took the photograph home and was processing it that I realised the potential. You can see the eyebrow above the eye and just to the left of the tree, the nostrils. And it was easy to imagine the dragon laying in wait. As I said, 
full of surprises. Okay, let's get down to the river. This is a lovely spot on the river. There's a footpath on the other side, but on this side it's a bit less defined, so you get fewer people here. And just as before, what I'm going to do is just, just watch for a while and see what birds I can see along the river. I'm also near a small brook which I've uh, photographed a few times. I'll show you my favourite photograph of that spot. Well later in the film I'll show you an even better image of this but at the time this was my favourite. It was just after a rainstorm and you can see the rain had washed away a lot of the undergrowth but it did leave quite a clean picture with some subdued green colours and a nice composition of this small waterfall. So for those of you who want to know I'm using a Sony camera it's a a6600 which is a crop sensor camera and the lens is a 200 to 600 millimeter Sony zoom so with the crop sensor that gives me I think around about 900 millimeters of uh, focal length While I was walking along, I did see a dipper just for a fleeting moment. Just about maybe 10, 20 metres up the river. So I've got down by the river bank. It's quite bright here as you can see. But I'm behind some rocks and a fallen tree behind me. So I'm hoping if I sit here long enough and quietly enough and don't make any sudden moves the dipper will start moving you know and working his way along the river as they do. I've taken the camera off the tripod so I can move quicker. But I do get that feeling that this is going to be a long wait. That spot by the river was just too, too warm. So I've come into the shade and I've just stopped to show you these lovely colours this time of year. All that new 
bright green growth. Well, photography wise so far this morning that's not been that successful but uh, what a lovely day and it really is nice to get out again so to break the uh, deadlock what I thought I was going to do is take another shot in my favorite brook here hopefully you can hear me above the din but the sun is way over there still so we're still in shade should be us to get some nice long exposures of this cascade here and there's a little bit of dappled light coming through as well just to add a bit of interest so what I want to do is get all of that cascade in and then this pool and as much of this one as possible as well so I think a portrait shot maybe and of course a wide angle lens I'm going to put my 16 to 55 mil lens on so hopefully you can hear me above the noise of the waterfall but I've got the camera set up in portrait mode 16mm lens on and I've got a variable ND filter on to cut down the light and a polarizer to cut out some of the reflection in the water I've taken the first shot but the exposure is too long I don't know if you can just make out the ferns down here are just moving a little bit, so it's done a long exposure of about 13-15 seconds. Makes the water look all ethereal like, but anything else which is moving slightly. So let's cut the shutter speed down, maybe to a couple of seconds. So what I'm going to have to do is uh, let in a bit more light with the ND filter and then adjust the shutter speed. Now there's two seconds, just make sure we're focused. Let's try that one. Yep, that looks really nice. Now let's focus in on that fern. Still some movement unfortunately, that's just moving too quickly. Is it acceptable? Maybe. I might take a fast exposure just for that and see if I can uh, brush it in later in post-processing. Well in the end I didn't need to have two shots blended together. This was just one, 16 millimeters. F11 was enough at 1.6 of a second at ISO 50. Really like the composition. I like how there's a leading line from the bottom left corner from that small fern up to the bigger one and it zigzags up through to that fallen logs, log, should I say, at the top. Very nice. Well, I think that first shot was okay. I'd really like to make a more of a feature of this fern down here, so uh, I'm going to try that now. So I just repositioned the camera, got a little bit closer rather than using the zoom. And as you can see, this made a bit more of a feature of the fern in the bottom right. Really like the dappled shade and light in this photograph and the colours of vibrant green 
and dark browns. I took several shots and I just had to choose the right one with the uh, light highlighting the cascade in the foreground. And then the one in the back just fading out a little. So that was good. At least I've broken the photography uh, deadlock. <laughs> Maybe I'll find something else now. I'm going to put the long lens back on and start wandering back up the hill. That was a bit of a climb up from the water's edge. But I have found a nice spot here. Again, I'm surrounded by boulders and trees. But I've got a bit of height here. And uh, the birds keep coming and going and landing on some of these branches in front of me. So I'm going to sit here for a little while and see what I get. I've taken the uh, camera off the tripod now so I can move around or move the camera around quickly should I say but it's about 11 o'clock in the morning now so the sun's way way up there and uh, I'm soon going to call it a day Well, again, I'll be truthful. When I photographed this bird, I didn't even know what it was. I could see it moving around the trees, perching in the same place each time. And then, of course, later on, I get at home, I'm able to crop in and see, and it's a spotted flycatcher. Not so common these days. So a really, really lucky find. Well, I think I'm going to make my way back up across the moor and back to the car. Now, I know there's some stone chats and other birds up there, so I may be lucky and get some photographs of those. But I think I'm not going to film any more today. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. It doesn't cost anything, and if, give you, if you give it a like, it will help other people find the channel. But for now, cheerio.